It took thousands of dollars in over three years, but I have successfully saved this rare one year only vintage Honda motorcycle from the scrap heap. And it is now fully titled and registered for on-road use. This is my 1969 Honda SL90 dual sport motorcycle, kind of a scrambler with that beautiful exhaust that I absolutely love. Repainted at some point in Honda Sunshine Yellow. Not sure the reason why or when that happened. In this video, I'm gonna give you the story of this motorcycle, the restoration process, how I was finally able to get a title after not having one, and how this bike can be yours. Well, it's January and super gross outside, but let's do a super cold, cold start test. One. <laughs> Three kicks, not bad. So as you see there, it likes to smoke a little bit right when you start it up, apparently that is normal. So I'm told by a uh, specialist, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's take it for a ride. Let's go over the bike specs. The 1969 Honda SL90 has an 89cc overhead cam, single cylinder, four stroke engine, outputting a whopping eight horsepower and four foot pounds of torque. It has a four speed manual transmission, a 2.2 gallon gas tank, and weighs only 216 pounds. The bike was made for only one year but parts are not too hard to find because the engine and other components are shared with the CT90 and other common motorcycles. There are only two notes as far as running condition. Number one, the uh, timing chain is a little bit loud. You can probably hear it in the footage. We're gonna talk about the mechanic uh, who finished this bike. He said that that is a noise. Eventually the guides might be running out, but for now it's totally fine. He said you can leave it alone for a long period of time, but that's not that difficult of a fix. And the only other note is the back tire's uh, tube slowly loses air. You know, if you leave it alone for over a month, you have to put a little bit of air in it. Other than that, everything works. Well, that was awesome. I really wanted to start in two kicks, but three, Pretty darn good. So really quickly, let's talk about fuel in classic motorcycles. So for the SL90 and all my other motorcycles, I have a, uh, a fuel can right here with a special mix. This is premium ethanol free fuel with fuel stabilizer in it. This right here is case in point Y, unfortunately. This carburetor had fuel with ethanol in it. Uh, over time, it gummed up the carburetor to the point where this bike didn't run, so it sat too long, and then the fuel started to eat away at the gaskets, and now this carburetor is leaking all over the place. So this is a future project. So in all my motorcycles and small engines, I use Tecron Power Sports and Small Engine Fuel System Treatment. This keeps your carburetors nice and clean, and it stabilizes gas with ethanol in it for up to two years. And when it comes to everything else, larger vehicles, I use Tecron Complete Fuel System Cleaner. Wait a second, was that section an ad? Yes, it was. Thanks, Tecron, for sponsoring Jason Explains Things. But seriously, use the best gas you can get your hands on, ethanol-free if possible, or at least premium, and use fuel stabilizers so you don't have issues like that red bike back there. There are three great old videos if you wanna see the whole barn find restoration of this bike from start all the way to finish, but I'll briefly cover what I did here, and then I'm gonna talk about what a pro Honda mechanic did to finish the bike off and get it totally ready to go. In the first video, I installed a new six volt battery and verified that the electrical system worked. We did an ultrasonic cleaning and rebuilt the original carburetor. And then the bike fired up for the first time in 30 years. Idle! It's idling! <laughs> so things started to get serious and expensive. I installed new tubes and tires. I did my first attempt at a top-end engine rebuild with a new cylinder, piston, and piston rings. I sourced an original OEM switch and keys from Thailand and installed those. And I did other odds and ends like a new air filter and a new OEM speedometer cable. Hey, so pro tip, if your uh, air filter looks like this, you, uh, you need a new one. <laughs> this is also the point where I started the long, arduous, ridiculous process of trying to get a title for this bike in my name. I had a bill of sale, but the title had been lost and unfortunately the original owner had long since passed away. I then had to make an appointment to get the bike inspected by the Washington State Patrol. I did that, then I turned in that paperwork along with other paperwork, along with several, I think like 350 or so dollars in fees. And after that, I waited a while and then got a branded registration and 
a license plate, but I would have to wait a full three years to be able to then apply again for a title. I did top end engine rebuild attempt number two because I messed up on the first one. I rebuilt the front forks and installed new fork boots. I replaced the front and rear brake shoes and installed new brake cables. I repainted the frame and miscellaneous other parts. I installed the new gas tank pet cock and the bike ran but still needed work. Hey, if you're enjoying this, hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to grow my channel to 100,000 subscribers in 2024, and I'm also trying to make this my primary job. These are ridiculous goals, but hey, if you help, it can happen. And if you don't help, probably can. <laughs> Yay! And now for the final round, and this part is not on video. I took the engine apart again a third time and replaced the valve stem seals. This made the engine smoke a whole lot less, but I was still concerned about it and thought I would still had probably messed something up. And I ended up shipping this bike to Classic Moto Works in Portland, Oregon. And when I, you know, I shipped it to them and I said, these are the issues I'm having. Do whatever you gotta do, just make it run great. Here's where things take a little turn and get kind of cool. So I wait like two or three weeks after shipping the bike out. Uh, one of the ma main mechanics there calls me and says, hey, Mr. Cole, so what's going on with the bike again? And I explain the smoking issue where I think that oil is getting by maybe either the, the piston rings or the valve stem seals are still bad or maybe the hone of the, of, of, of the cylinder is off or, or something. I'm like, I, I, it's still messed up. And he's like, um, well, Usually when uh, bikes come into to our, to our shop, they're kind of a basket case. They need all sorts of things, but I've kind of torn your bike apart partially and I can't find any faults in the work you did. And the bike runs kind of great. The, the timing chain makes a little noise, still does make a little bit of a noise, um, but it's still like, fine. Um, maybe you have a lot of oil in your, you know, in your muffler and maybe that it's kind of burning that off, but I can't really find anything wrong with what you did. Now this might sound a little bit cheesy because it is, but in that moment on the phone, I started feeling feelings. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I was down on myself too much. Maybe, you know, like I'm my own worst critic sometimes. Maybe I'm keeping myself down. Maybe actually things aren't so bad. <laughs> Maybe this old motorcycle is like a metaphor for everything. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there. If you've ever like tried really hard on something and, and you feel like, oh, it sucks, it sucks. Maybe it doesn't suck. Maybe it could be better, but it's actually good. Maybe you're getting there, you know? And I don't know, like even now, uh, that was like well over a year ago, but now like in this moment uh, with current things going on, uh, I've been in video production for 20 years um, and I've been doing YouTube for six years and also, but it's never been my day job until now because I recently got laid off from my job and that's the second time I've been laid off since 2018. It's just been a lot of stuff um, and I get really down on YouTube. I get down on what I'm doing here sometimes. I look at views and I look at things and I get all upset and I go like, maybe, Maybe you're getting there, man. Maybe you're just, you're getting there. And you just gotta keep going. You gotta just keep focusing on what you can control. Keep, keep just trying to put out things that would make people's lives better, that they would enjoy, that they would maybe learn a thing or two from. Um, and, and as long as you're honoring God with what you're doing, maybe that's what matters. And maybe you should just shut up and keep going. Cheesy life lessons aside, got the bike back a couple weeks later, and then I got the receipt right here I can show you all, but it was 926 or so dollars for labor, for everything they did, and then got a list of all the things they replaced. That was Classic Moto Works getting me to the end. I love the SL90. I love the videos we did years ago about it, but it's time to pass it on to someone who will enjoy the bike as much as it deserves. Frankly, I just don't ride it enough. But in the meantime, I have been doing everything needed to keep it in excellent mechanical condition, including using a battery trickle charger, using only premium ethanol-free fuel with stabilizer, yay Tecron, running the bike regularly, and a recent oil change. And oh my gosh, after three years and two months, this 
showed up in the mail. A title in my name so I can sell this bike on to somebody else. They can register it in their name. They can get insurance. They can ride it on the road. They can do whatever the heck they want with it. How much money do I want? Well, I'm putting the Honda SL90 up for sale for $3,000. Um, that does not come close really <laughs> to covering how much money and especially time I've invested into it, but it is a good, fair price. I feel good about asking for after doing research, seeing how much these go for. So I will have a link down in the description below uh, for a listing for the bike. Once the bike is sold, I'll update the description saying it's sold, probably put in a comment saying it's sold. So this is goodbye to the SL90 but it does not have to be goodbye to classic Honda motorcycle projects if you're into them. Because over the past several years, I might have been acquiring things as things pop up like a crazy person. And they're all behind me right now. So they're, they're there. <laughs> if you wanna know more about the bikes behind me and don't mind the occasional vintage motorcycle video intermixed with your truck videos, you let me know down in the comments. You like this video, you share it, you watch it, it does well. I would love nothing more than to kind of mix things up on the channel, but how YouTube works is essentially, if you don't watch it, you don't like it, then I'm still, I still love it. I'm still gonna collect them. I'm still gonna fix up these bikes, but I just won't make videos about it. So anyway, until next time, everyone, God bless, and I can do all things.